Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with an absolutely stunning, and I do mean stunning, recording of music by Czech composer Miroslav Kabelac. This guy is really good. Now, the one thing that these people have no clue about is his actual dates. They have him here down as 1891 to 1953. That's not even close. The reality was something like 1908 to 1979. I think that's what it was, because they get it right here in the booklet somewhere. They actually mention it. Uh, let's see. Yes, 1908 to 1979. I mean, you know, I can't believe they did that. I don't know whose dates, frankly, were, were 1891 to 1953. Haven't a clue. Prokofiev, maybe? I don't know. That's a good one. He died around 1953. Anyway, it's, it's irrelevant because the music is fantastic. Now, Kabbalach was, uh, he was, he was, had a tough life. I mean, so many of these people did. He was a true Democrat, a freedom fighter, um, at least artistically. And, you know, he was in stern opposition to the Nazi invasion of Czechoslovakia, but of course, who wasn't, who was in Czechoslovakia. But then afterwards, he was a staunch anti-communist, um, which caused his music to be largely disregarded during his lifetime. This has its advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is that your, your life is ruined. That's a serious disadvantage. The advantage is that you get to go your own way. I mean, he was going to go his own way anyway, but that only encouraged him. Now, his style is impossible to categorize. It's what you might call expanded tonality with some avant-garde elements. He wrote, for example, works for percussion ensemble. He experimented with electroacoustic music and one of the first Czech composers to do so, knowing full well that no one was going to pay him any attention. And he did get some recognition outside of Czechoslovakia at the time. It's a, it's a terrible pity that he died in 79. He wasn't that old. He was 70, 71, and didn't have an opportunity to see the eventual liberation of Czechoslovakia. Um, but he was a remarkable, remarkable composer. He wrote no small works. I mean small in the sense of expressively or significantly. He wrote short works, quite a few. But he, he, everything he wrote somehow matters. It's meaningful. It's serious. He's not a joker, not by any stretch of the imagination, although his music does run the full gamut of emotional expression. I, I, I can't really describe it other than to say it's, it's extremely, extremely intense and seriously beautiful, often exquisitely beautiful, um, in, and in a traditional way with tunes and with amazing textures and his ear for sonority. He wrote eight symphonies, and they are a wild collection of symphonies. There's a symphony for, for brass, timpani, and organ. There's a symphony that has a wordless soprano vocalese. There's a symphony with a narration. There's a symphony with a choir and percussion ensemble. I mean, there's all kinds of things. He was a questing spirit. And I just think he's really, really important. Fortunately, the symphonies are all available on Superfun. You can get them. And two of his major, major orchestral works, and there are four of them on this disc. The first was called The Mystery of Time, subtitled Pasacalia for Orchestra. The other is called Hamlet Improvisation. Both of those were recorded by Carol Anshirl magnificently, and those recordings, of course, are, are, are classics, iconic recordings, but we really could use new recordings in modern sound, of course, and now we have them with the Prague Radio Symphony Orchestra under Marko Ivanovich and uh, with Miroslav Sekera playing the piano in the last work, Metamorphosis II, which we'll get to in a moment. But first I want to talk to about the mystery of time and the Hamlet improvisation. The mystery of time is, to my way of thinking, one of the great 20th century orchestral works. I mean, really, really, uh, it's a, a, a screaming masterpiece. Um, it, it, it's fascinating. The title really kind of says it all. It seems like a pretentious title, but it's not. It's a musical title because the piece is about rhythm and your perception of time, the perception of simultaneous tempi and speeds, because a Pasacalia, as some of you may know, is, is a, a series of variations over a repeated bass line. 
Now, this is not a formal passacaglia like Bach's passacaglia in C minor, that sort of thing. It's not like that, but it does have this steady undercurrent. And it's 25 minutes long, basically, and it, it's just quite simply the most magnificent, sustained, gradual crescendo in like all of orchestral music. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, it makes Bolero look like child's play uh, because the, the, what, what happens is that it's not just one instrument after another comes in. It's nothing like that at all. There's, there's extremely evocative melodic material, first of all. And second of all, the, the musical surface seems to change its speed and the way it's moving and how it moves while the underlying, the underlying accompanimental sort of things maintain a relatively steady pulse. And there is a rhythm section. It's basically timpani, uh, snare drum and bass drum and tenor drum or something like that. But it's, it's a bunch of drums. Um, that keep up the rhythm and the intensity and the climax is generated not merely by volume, although there is that, but the orchestra, it's a large orchestra, but not crazy large. It's not just volume, it's a function of rhythm. It's a function of, of the, the rhythmic motion of the music and of the two or three layers of it coming together and coming apart at different points to create climactic moments. And so the climax is just unbearably intense it really is, it's extraordinary. But it's not, it's not like brassy, vulgar, ear-splitting intense. It's expressively intense. And then it fades away into, into, into silence. It is an amazing piece of music that's mesmerizing, absolutely mesmerizing. And the, and the title, Mystery of Time, is entirely apposite. It describes it beautifully because it's about your perception of motion in time. It's that simple. A, just a, a, an incredible masterpiece. This is a very, very good performance. You can see it actually on YouTube. Some of you mentioned it because we've talked about this piece a little bit. And uh, it, is, it is just, I, I wish it were performed like every 10 minutes in real concerts because it's just a magnificent thing. It really is. So after that, there is the Hamlet improvisation. Now, the Hamlet improvisation, as, as Kabbalah tells us, is about Hamlet, not surprisingly. The person, it's not about the play. It doesn't illustrate you know, the plot line. It's about a conflicted personality. And that's what's improvisatory about it. It has, it has moments of extreme stasis and introversion, as Hamlet did, along with outbursts at unpredictable moments the improvisatory element of, of hostility and fury and, and anger and, and wistfulness. It's really, it's, it's a 16 minutes long. It's just an incredibly serious, beautifully written, wonderfully judged piece. And as the title Mystery of Time suggests, one thing Kabbalah really had was timing. He had a great sense of musical timing. He knew how to balance his episodes and how to make them make them sound absolutely inevitable and, and beautifully proportioned. And all of this music has that as well. So then we have Reflections. Reflections is subtitled Nine Miniatures for Orchestra. And boy, are these cool. I mean, they're just so fascinating. One after the other, they range in time from like a minute to maybe four minutes. And they are exceptionally wonderful and short. And, and you always want more of them. You, it, it's, just, it's just an amazing little work. I, you know, it's a little work, like I said, that's a big work. It packs a big punch into a very small space. So that's, that's the third thing on the disc. And the fourth thing is Metamorphosis II. Metamorphosis II on the oldest Czech hymn. And this is for piano and orchestra. It's, again, about 16 minutes long. No one will ever play it because it's for piano and orchestra, and it's only 16 minutes long, and it's not really a concerto. But the hymn is quite recognizable. You hear it immediately, um, right at the beginning of the piano, um, with, interspersed with sort of brass proclamations. And the, the metamorphoses or variations on the tune are, are quite easy to follow and full of that same sense of, of purpose and, and evocative use of timbre. I, I just love this music. This guy is really, really good. He's modern. He doesn't pander. He has integrity. That's what this music has, integrity. Just unbelievably 
powerful expressive integrity. And these are lovely performances, quite well recorded, a little dry. They could go with a little bit more bass, but it's okay. I mean, the sound is good. The performances are really, really fine. Um, Miroslav Sekera, the pianist, is quite good. Marko Ivanovich, the conductor, knows what he's doing. The Prague Radio Symphony Orchestra clearly knows the music. Uh, this was important, a really important and and wonderful release for anybody who cares about really seriously good 20th century music. And if you like, for example, Bartok or Shostakovich or composers like that, you'll have no problem listening to Kabbalah. But he doesn't sound anything like them. He sounds like himself. And, and you know, really, really fascinating character and magnificent music. And I urge you to listen to it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.